Hey, hi everyone. <laughs> I just did this, but I'm doing it again. Hello everybody, hello everybody. Hello, hello to everyone that is joining. Hello, I'm gonna be hopping on with Emily from Spirited Seeker in just a couple minutes here. So we are going to be talking all about sacred rage, all about anger, all about embodying the spectrum of emotions to come into a space of really beautiful sacred alchemy, particularly in the womb space. Hey Britt, so happy you're back, figuring things out here. Here is beautiful Emily. She's just arriving. Hi, my love. <laughs> Hello, beautiful. Hi, hi, hi. Oh, I'm gonna back it up here. There we go. Back it, back it up. <laughs> We're like, "Hello, everyone." <laughs> How are you today? <laughs> hi. We're gonna talk about rage. <laughs> This is what it's all about. Just to trigger you. Yeah, here we go. There we go. Um, hi. I'm so hey. excited. Jasmine and I are cycle synced, and so we're both bleeding right now, even though we're across the planet from each other, which I think is really cool. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's one of my favorite things to talk about because I feel like there's so much mystery when it comes to the womb that I love like I love the mystery of the womb I love that there's just things that we're never going to be able to know but we'll be able to feel it and when we start experiencing cycle syncing which so many people do um I feel like people finally get to like feel the mystic in their cycle totally next on the different you're interacting on such an an emotional energetic phase in the similar you know time frame so you connect yeah. on a deeper level. really it's such an honor to be here with you today so thank you yeah. for this conversation. so for everyone that doesn't know you um we're going to be this is emily we have i mean we could talk forever we could talk forever to me but for the sake of, of really tuning into um why we're here we're really wanting to discuss the a little bit of the context of sacred rage and the essence of anger for our upcoming circle next week and so i would love for you just to share a little bit about you whatever's feeling on your heart truthfully and then we can roll from there thank you well i just got back from a walk on the beach at sunrise really good friend of mine and she said you're the queen of surrender you teach me what it means to be in my feminine to flow and to trust and to let it be I think for me right now that's probably what feels most present to encapsulate the, the work that I offer because I'm obsessed with conscious creation I'm obsessed with emotional alchemy emotional intimacy with embodiment practices with all the nitty-gritty you know cellular unlocking juicy stuff but I think at the core of it it's about this concept of letting that process of unraveling of transformation of healing I never use that word anymore to be effortless as possible mm -hmm. that's really I think the code that I carry through everything including rage so mm -hmm. uh, emotional intimacy and alchemy for me is Oh, such a practice of vulnerability and opening and becoming mm, really attuned to the sensation in the body without the narrative, without the story. And so it's all, it's kind of all about mindfulness, really. I just never actually use that word because my association with mindfulness is that it's so boring and I don't want anything to do with it. And I don't think it speaks to women um, as much as it might do to the masculine mind, not women, uh, masculine mind versus feminine mind. So yeah, I'm here to bring through the connection to rage and anger as an elixir to your embodiment mm -hmm. yeah. i love i mean i love you for so many reasons but i feel like from the very first time we sat down with one another we were talking about fire like we were talking about like invoking fire and i remember saying to you like 
I, I forget the question that you asked, but it was something along the lines of like, what are you really craving right now? And I was like, I want to stoke my fire. Like there had been this season of um, a lot of just dampness and like kind of going through what it felt like to be really like damp and cool in my body because so much had been compressed and compartmentalized that there wasn't this like energetic flow in my body. And I remember us just talking about fire. And so it just felt so good when, when we were jamming on what we wanted to talk about. It was like, yeah, of course, we have to bring back the fire. <laughs> of course, of course, um, which is so beautiful. And so there's been kind of like two terms that I and, I, and, and you have been um, putting back and forth and, and the essence of anger combined with sacred rage. And so I had quite a few questions and we'll just kind of see what we get through today. And if we don't answer your question and you happen to be present here, um, we can always private message you and just tune in. Um, but I would love perhaps for both of us to talk on what the essence of anger or sacred rage means to us, like how we interpret it in our lives and our work so that we can talk about how they come together in circle. And while we do that, I would love for those of you that are live or even watching this online for the next 24 hours to tell us in the comment box too, what is anger to you? What is sacred rage or what is even what comes up when you hear those words? I'd love to touch base with those that are live. So let us know in the comments below. Um, anger, sacred rage. I, I also call it like holy rage or this energy of fire to me is life force is passion, is creativity, is my magnetism, it's my sensuality and my sexuality. It's all of these things that require a bit of spice, you know, like that if we don't have that movement there and it feels really stagnant, we can see that reflected or I can see that reflected immediately in my life. Mm -hmm. If I'm feeling a lack of simmer <laughs> in my body, it's reflected in my bank accounts. It's reflected in my relationship. It's affected in everything of, of my sex life with myself. Like, so this is a really beautiful part about connecting to anger because we, even if it's really foreign in the body, we can just look outside and kind of take reference point for how close or how far, how intimate, how loving, how distant and avoidant we might be with, with those parts of us. So Anger has always been quite comfortable for me. I Sadness was my big one. Like sadness was very feminine and I grew up with a really feminine and emotionally open mum. And I took my dad's side, you know, I was kind of like daddy's little girl. And so sadness, I was like weak, like that's, you know, floaty. That's just, oh my gosh, you're crying again. Like I just locked that shit down for 20 years of my life, really. I, mm. I didn't cry. So anger was my comfort zone, which I know for a lot of women might actually not be that uh, common because we don't like to use the currency of our perpetrators if we have been involved in like um, domestic violence, domestic abuse, anywhere where anger wasn't safe. And we associate that with our own expression of anger. Mm -hmm. So... Thankfully, I had a few outlets always growing up around a boxing bag, around the outdoors. There was always this like encouragement to go and be in my body, go and jump on the trampoline, go and get on the bag, go for a run. So I feel like that was such a beautiful gift that my parents did give me around how to attune to my own rage. Um, and that still carries through today. I still, I still kind of connect in that same way through the body rather than through the mind mm, so beautiful and I love and this is why I always love coming together I mean off the screen on the screen whatever happens because there is so much um alchemy even in our story in terms of like I was the polar opposite like sadness I was like turn it on like cry you will be loved like someone will hold you someone will comfort you if you cry but anger was very much what you were just describing, like associated with aggression, associated with violence. There was always this like really big um, catalyst to when anger was present. It wasn't 
integrated in day to day life. And it wasn't ever like spoken in terms of a feeling of being like, I feel angry. It was like, you would know that someone in my family system was angry based on the violent outburst. And so from a very young age, I learned that unsafe to have that emotion and if you did have that emotion it would it would push people away because I felt like I was like hiding from other people's outbursts of anger but sadness was like yeah like I could be sad I could cry I could do all these things and I remember the moments when I started to access my anger um I actually remember one moment in particular and it was in Kalini dance and I was in this really embodied practice like you're in your body like you are in the essence of embodiment and I had this anger wash over me that like scared the shit out of me. Like it actually, it, it unlocked something, but in the same moment, it scared me so deeply to feel a part of myself that I had never accessed in a way that felt truly safe in my own being. Um, and I was like clawing at my face and like running at my mouth and like on the floor and making sound. And it was just this huge primal experience that ended up unlocking some of the potent, most potent medicine of my journey it was like, holy shit, there's this whole part of me that's craving to be explored. And I can do it in a way that feels really, really integral to um, how I'm showing up in my life in the same way of being happy, in the same way of being sad. Like I was starting to understand the spectrum of emotion and not, not seeing it as like a good or bad state. Um, and so anger for me has been a learning experience of how to feel really safe in my body while experiencing it. And so I'm so thankful for women like you who have a really clear sense of like embodied action that can bring you into the experience of anger instead of feeling it and feeling trapped. Um, and so, so beautiful. And that was one of, one of the questions actually was, um, what are some ways, oh, um, yeah, what are some ways to release rage energy gradually before it becomes a harmful outburst? And so I would love to hear how you feel about that in terms of the, the beautiful practices that you've been able to cultivate. Such a good question, because this is a, this is the practical, right? Like it's all, it's so beautiful to create the languaging around it. But until we have the experiential version of what to do when that energy is present and how to move through it, how to be with it, how to create space with it, then it's all just conceptual, right? So that's such a brilliant question. And I think also to tend to that incredible experience that you just shared too, that it doesn't always have to look like that for everybody too, if they are disconnected from their anger, it might be a really slow burn. It might be a really like beautifully, like a foreplay, right? That just lasts forever instead of a big giant um, cataclysmic experience. Because I think for me in accessing my more feminine, you know, like safe, slow softness, the opposite of my anger kind of, um, I wanted it to be this really big thing. I wanted to have an experience that would crack me open to it. And for those of you that might resonate with that, of like, there's this being inside me, this wild animal that wants to come out and it has to be dramatic and big and, and that might hinder our experience of making contact. So I just wanted to speak that for those that feel like it's really far away or that it's, it has to be extreme because it can be a slow burn. You know, it can be this beautiful um, unraveling that, that can happen over time. So to speak to the actionables and the, practices one of my favorite things to do is <laughs> just use the the momentum of the feeling in my body wherever I am in whatever capacity is accessible so we might get angry at really inconvenient times where it actually isn't safe to fully express and a lot of the time it might not be you might be out in public and you can't just do a primal scream on a busy beach right because mm -hmm. <laughs> you might get arrested so for all of these things that happen on a day-to-day -day level where you, you know, you're road raging in your car, I like to crank the music and sing really loud because you're not straining the throat. If you were to do a scream all the time, it's, it puts a lot of strain on the throat. Um, and so using music to move energy when I'm in my car, that's like my best therapy session ever. But even if I'm waiting in line and I've received a text message that really triggers me, 
and I'm out at a grocery store or something, I'll just like shake whatever is available to me just purely to move energy. So I'm, if I'm waiting in line and I'm like, <gasps> have this rush of, Oh my God, like, Whoa, that makes me angry. I'll just feel into it of where it's in my body, which often it's, it just lives like in the depth of my gut or my womb. And with my mind, just purely like visual. And this isn't for everybody because I'm a really visual person. So you might be auditory. You might need the music. You might need to use your voice. It depends on what your style of expression is, which is such a fun experiment. But to make it really accessible, instead of always tucking it away and saving it for later, for when you do have time and space, which of course is incredibly valuable, use what you have when you have it to tend to support your system wherever you are you know, no matter how little and minute because at the end of the day emotion is just energy in motion if we let it play out its cycle so when we don't and we trap it we suppress it we go okay i'll, I'll do that at a dance class later tonight amazing that's beautiful because you can unlock that again and release it but the body has such an innate intelligence to cycle through the chemical of emotion that if you give it just a little open doorway, it'll show you how in a way that doesn't have to be big and dramatic. You know, it might just be the shaking of my hand in public while I'm walking and breathing and oh, maybe just taking a few exhalations. And by the time I've left the shopping center, it's done. Mm -hmm. And that was that. I have to be more than that, you know? Yeah. And I, and I love this so much because I, I find that my practices are very much the same. And yes, going back to like my big catalytic outburst, that tends to be the nature of my experiences a lot of the time, but it's so not, not even, but it's like, and when I am in, like you, like you mentioned in lineup somewhere, like I, I get angry when, when I started to recognize how my anger felt in my body, which is a practice, I started to realize how often I was angry without tuning into the emotion because there was this really quick, like it would come into my body and I would automatically push it away. Like it was very quick to leave my body. So when I started tuning into what anger actually felt like in my body, it was easier for me to become aware of when it would arise. And then it was easier for me to be like, okay, like what do I have the capacity to tend to right now? Um, That's a question. Can we just pause right yeah. there? What do I have the capacity in this moment to tend to? I'm going to write that down. Please keep going. Thank you for that. Yes. And, and a lot of the way that I navigate just my own emotional alchemy and coming into a space of deeply honoring the complexity of being in a human body each day and all of these responses that come into our fields um, is by asking myself these questions, like, like taking a pause. Pauses for me aren't always available. Like, like sometimes I'm like, yeah, like I'm, I'm in an, an outburst much to what this question is asking. Like I do, I think we all have the capacity to like go into an outburst, especially when we're talking about in being in relationship or in any sort of partnership or any sort of community. Like there's going to be moments where we do express ourselves perhaps in a way that didn't feel integral because anger is a big emotion and sometimes it does come out in those ways. And so I don't know if I believe that we can prevent that happening 100% of the time. And I think sometimes it sets us up from feeling like anger is a bad emotion when we don't feel like we can control it. But the medicine of sacred rage or anger or whatever you want to call it in your own language is that it is fire and when something catches fire in your body um there is an expression that needs to happen and so the more that we dilute it or the more that we don't allow it to be in our bodies and, and in our expression that's when i find that that outburst can become harmful and a lot of what I do is through my throat. And so if I do notice that anger does start to come up. I give myself the ability to just remind myself, Kate, drop your jaw, drop your jaw, open your mouth. I love the idea of shaking. I usually just put my hands right onto my womb and either whisper or say out loud, I feel angry right now. Like I need to verbalize it and say it so that I don't get sidetracked sadness because it's really easy for me to do um 
And so that's usually my process is just coming into a really deep space of awareness, naming it, and then being like, what can I do in this moment? Yeah. Mm. Oh, I, there's so many layers, isn't there? Because even with the labeling and the naming, it's so beneficial, especially if we're in conflict or dialogue with another, because that's how we communicate, right? To name, like, this is what's happening inside of me. Mm -hmm. And then the layer deeper is, okay, how can we unpack and unravel the, the association that we even have with that word, right? Like what's the vibrational signature of that word that we're then carrying in and expecting from anger and how it moves through us. But that's, yeah, such an awesome response to that question. In, um, yeah. prevent, prevention is not really the, yeah, still labeling that as a negative or a bad thing when really it's your, it's your passion. It shows that you give a shit about something. It shows that you're connected to your boundaries. It shows where your line in the sand is. Mm -hmm. All of those are very, very positive. Yeah. And I mean, yeah, this conversation is, is, could go like so many different avenues and, and still for everyone that's joining, feel free to pop any, any questions or reflections or, or comments in the box, because this is, you know, so multifaceted in a sense where I am such a different person than Emily is and our experiences are different and, and their, your experiences with anger are different as well. And so it's not as black and white as to say, okay, we're just going to talk about anger. Like we have to talk about, <laughs> the vastness of the experience. I mean, this is why I'm bringing that the essence of anger into the womb journey is because one of the things that I talk about all the time is it's not enough to just teach about the womb. Like we have to guide people into their own unique womb journey, their own unique womb medicine, their own unique womb experience, because that's when we start eradicating this very like blanket statement of every single person's experience on this planet and the variations of normal that exist in it. Hands down, 100%. Oof, yes. Yes, and we'll be going through a couple of practices in the circle that Jasmine and I are co-facilitating. So if you want preview of a taste of how that feels in your body then we will be guiding you through that process in real time too yeah oh i'm so excited for this our call so yes the, this is like our little like hello everyone um anger come play with us let's explore <laughs> the, the <kitty> cats. <laughs> all of our marketing cat up close are you joining are you coming are you hello <laughs> And we're going to laugh. We're definitely going <laughs> to laugh while we explore anger because um, that's, that's what me and Emily do. Um, did you have any questions on your end or should I keep reading through my sheet? Keep reading. Uh, the only one I had was that, yes, this will be sent to... So if you can't attend this school live, if it's a time zone conflict or you're at work or you're with the kids, the recording will be sent to those only that have um purchased a ticket to keep to keep the sacredness and the privacy of the container so if you do want to participate but you aren't able to join live yes you will be able to access the recording yes thank you um there was many many responses to the little box asking if anybody had any questions that did kind of go in the same route and they were all in the context of like i really lose control like, I find that I really lose control when I do have an angry outburst and it can be destructive. And so there was a, how can this be sacred? Like, how can anger be something that is good or sacred or holy or any of these, these words that we're using? And so I do think it's important for us to talk about the difference between perhaps like violent outbursts and, and, and aggression and, and these things and what we're discussing as being, um, in my lens and the way that I would talk about this in, in the short container that we have. And of course, really tending to the individuality of each person that mentioned this, um, the difference between the way that we interpret anger and rage usually is fundamental to how we experienced it in our younger years and how we are currently experiencing it in our reality and so a lot of the time what this can mean is much to what I was saying at the start of this live like for me anger 
was never just like a feeling there was like an embodiment of like aggression and abusiveness and and this like huge outburst and so I never had any like healthy um, examples of anger and so when we're talking about something like sacred rage and we're talking about holy rage and we're talking about like this essence of anger, what it is is really deconstructing anger for what it is in the visceral part of the body and how we can start um, integrating it so that it doesn't end up being this really volatile experience every single time that we experience it or we are putting it out into the world. Yeah, and I feel like a lot of that work happens in removing or uh, purging the narrative around the feeling because an emotion only becomes an emotion when we put the label on it, when we name it, which is what I was alluding to before, because the body doesn't have this like graph of you have eight emotions and that's a cold and this is how it feels in the body, right? Can you imagine? We, we do that. Humans do that. We're like, let's categorize and put things in piles to make it make sense to our mind. And so our body just has, has the sensation, the feeling. And if it is the feeling that reminds you of something, you either avoid, suppress, numb, run away, lean in, whatever. But, and as I said before, naming is an incredibly powerful tool to do, especially if you, you're in um, conflict or if you're struggling to express it and it does feel like there's a lid over the top of it and you want to access it, naming brings it forth. But the practice I feel with um, the outburst is, is not necessarily understanding, unpacking, analyzing those associations with that emotion, but instead attuning to the mindfulness practice of how it feels in your body, of what that expression um, what that emotion is expressing itself through sensation in your body. So instead of, you know, like my mind is like, I am angry because my hands are hot and I'm clenching up, go to the clenching up and the feeling heat, right? Yeah. And breathe into that. And as soon as we strip away the story, it becomes a way that we can rewire our nervous system to create more space and safety for it. This doesn't happen overnight. But, and it's really important to honor and acknowledge those stories that we have carried for so long that have protected us and that are really real and valid, especially from, from our formative years. Um, but I found in my own personal practice, especially with anger too, I grew up with a lot of outbursts and not violence, but um, there was a lot of fear and a lot of, you know, walking on eggshells and passive aggressive and sarcasm and all of that. These are all expressions of anger. It's not anger itself. I think that's a really big distinction mm -hmm. to make, right? Mm -hmm. Hostility, violence, aggression. We think that that is anger, but that's actually a way that someone is expressing that emotion. It's not the emotion itself. So um, to, to touch on the outburst piece, I would really feel that encouraging a practice of making contact with sensation in the body is the best place to start whether that's it definitely wasn't meditation for me I know that works for some people but that's the mindfulness that I find really boring I'm like no nah, I don't want to do that I want to go to a dance class instead you know what does it feel like for me to move my hips oh like not okay oh why am I pissed off at that teacher for being skinnier than me oh I'm not very good at this oh you know and all this stuff starts to come up it's like mm -hmm. What's the sensation without the story? What's the sensation without the story? Mm, what's the sensation without the story? This is like, yes. Yeah. The more you do that in other areas of your life when you're not already in the outburst, when you haven't already been pushed to the edge, it will become more familiar that when you start to feel those sensations, it's like, oh, here I am. Mm -hmm. That's what is and and now I might have a different way of moving it now I might be able to name it now I might be able to catch myself and ask for space or take five minutes or go put my feet on the earth you know but it's all about stretching that gap between like zero to bah and stretching the gap I truly feel like mindfulness is is the best way to do that yeah and we have this beautiful for anybody that is a that holds a womb that that the womb you're continuously in the rhythm of your body knowing how to alchemize like 
this is what I teach so much in my work. Like we are in a cyclic body that shows us, yes, we're going into a different phase, a different season. Can we use this season as an opportunity to drop in and alchemize in a different way? And I talk a lot about the luteal phase, right? I talk a lot about the inner autumn being the phase of reflection. And a lot of the conversations I have with people that are experiencing big emotion, whether anger or any of these these terms that we've called these energies in our body these sensations in our body it's like yeah well as your womb softens and swells so does your heart that's what i always say and so when we have this duality of swelling in our bodies we create pathology around calling it pms and yes i i deeply acknowledge and honor the biological body and i think we're missing the mark a little bit on this being a really potent, powerful season of your cycle to start softening and feeling into those sensations and seeing if there is some sort of practices that you can start weaving in while you're in the bigness of it. And so for me, the womb shows us so much of the way in terms of how we can really start dropping into that sensory experience of being in a cyclical body. Mm, yeah, and it's not about adding something else in oh, I've got to tend to my anger now. Great. Like I have to do all these practices. I don't have the time. It's not about adding more. It's about stripping back. Like how many times do you feel that sensation and you pick up your phone? How many times do you feel that sensation and you breathe a little shallower because you're like, I don't want to feel this. It's not about the adding in. It's about the stripping away. What's there that's actually blocking the full um, potential intimacy that can be cultivated in those moments that are already there present for you yeah they're only about being and the doing and the great i've got to attend this workshop and then 10 more like no it's about right? it's all about accessibility because i feel like that's the way to sustainable change yeah i just took you guys on a little walk into my kitchen <laughs> because i'm baking a crisp <laughs> Um, yeah. and just What's checked the time and was like, oh, the crisp is done. So it's bringing <laughs> a little humanness into the experience of our Instagram live. <laughs> Thanks for coming on my tour. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Oh, so beautiful. Well, I feel like we have really trickled in the essence of our circle. And, you know, I feel so strongly not even strongly I just feel viscerally in my body that this is such a a beautiful coming together um in a collaborative way between myself and Emily but also in all of the beautiful hearts that join in in really wanting to tend to this part of ourselves and so it's going to be so beautiful it's next Tuesday for everyone in Vancouver so August 25th and the beautiful link is in my bio if you're wanting to join we've made it really accessible in terms of pricing it's $22 um, and of course the recording will be available and you get some little gifts to integrate all of these beautiful practices after as well and so we would really love to see you there yeah, yeah. and if any other questions arise drop them and we can tend to them in that call as well yeah. thank you so much I can't wait I'm so excited <laughs> Yay. I love you. I love you so much. Have a beautiful, beautiful day. We're on different time zones. So, um, yeah. And, and feel, feel it all. Feel it all, my love. It's Sensory fun. experience. <laughs> <laughs> it's where we're alive. It shows that we're alive. Yeah, we're alive. Living and breathing and beating. Mm. Okay. We love you all. Um, we'll talk to you soon. Bye, guys. See you.